Hi, this is Mrs. Rodriguez with another lesson video. Today we're looking at how to convert or change fractions into decimals. Okay, so we want to change fractions into decimals. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, let's take the example of 3 fourths. Now, the first thing we have to remember is that this fraction bar also means to divide. Okay, it means to divide. So the idea is we're going to take the fraction and we're going to divide the two numbers together and that will give us our decimal. But in order to do that, we have to know which number we're dividing by which, right? Do we divide by the 4 or do we divide, do we divide 3 by 4 or do we divide 4 by 3? So here's a, a little trick I like to use to help me remember. So the steps are the numerator is your top dog, okay? And the top dog always goes in the house. So here is my doggy Theodore, whom I love very much. And um, as you can see, he is in the numerator position, right? The number on the top of the fraction. And he is my top dog, okay? The top dog always goes in the house. So, your numerator is what goes in the house, and you're dividing by your denominator, the bottom number. So it's how many times the bottom number or denominator goes into the top number or numerator. And not only does he go in the house, but let's say you're given, instead of a fraction, you're given two numbers side by side, He's always number one. The top dog is always number one. So if you do get something that is horizontal instead of a fraction, we, uh, you will still know which number goes into the house to do the division, okay? So here is the same example, except now I've put in numbers. So for 3 fourths, three is gonna be our top dog. 3 will be the one that goes in the house, and we're dividing 3 by 4, okay? And if they were side to side, the very first number is your number 1, and he's your top dog, okay? Now we know which number is being divided by which. We can move on to, well, what are the steps for dividing? What are the steps for long division? So here we go. Number 1, top dog goes in the house. Number 2, Add your decimal. Number three, drop down a zero. Number four, divide. Then you're gonna multiply, subtract, and then repeat it all until there's no remainder. So let's go ahead and do these steps one at a time with our example of three fourths. So let me go ahead and choose a color. So the first thing is the top dog goes in the house. So our three is our top dog, so three went into the house, okay? So that's our top dog, three. Now it says to add a decimal, okay? You will notice that four is bigger than three. So because four is bigger than three, we would be stuck, right? Four doesn't go into three. So that's why we have to add our decimal. We add our decimal so we can drop down zeros because now I can add a zero and instead of it being how many times does four go into three, now we have how many times does four go into 30. But let me back up. Four doesn't go into three, so we're gonna go ahead and put zero. We've added our decimal. Wherever you add the decimal in the problem, it goes straight up and that's where it's gonna be in the answer. And we've added our zero. Now we're ready to divide. So we've added the decimal, we've got our zero, now we're gonna divide. How many times does four go into 30? Well, 30 divided by four is seven. So our answer to the division goes on top. And now we multiply seven times four and that's 28. So 28 is gonna go underneath the 30. Now you subtract. 30 minus 28 is 2. 
Notice that step seven says repeat until there's no remainder. Well, we still have a remainder, the two. The two's our remainder. So we need to keep going until it's a zero and there's nothing left. So it says repeat until no remainder. So we're gonna start back up. We already have our decimal, so we don't have to worry about it, but we're gonna drop down another zero. So here's my next zero and I'm gonna drop it down. And now we have 20. How many times does four go into 20? Well, 20 divided by four is five. So uh, the five goes on top, and now you multiply. Five times four is 20. So we're gonna put our answer underneath the remainder, and now we're gonna subtract. 20 minus 20 is zero. And as you can see, now we don't have a remainder. So our answer is gonna be 0 0.75. Okay, so some key things to remember, the top dog does go into, that ho into the house. You add the decimal and don't forget, it's the same place in answer right? Wherever it is, you're just going to go straight up and that's what it's going to be, where it's going to be in your answer. So let me go ahead and change this arrow to pink Ooh. so you can see what I'm talking about. You drop down your zero and then you divide. Now, when you divide, the answer goes on top. Okay, so the first one we had was four into 30, and 30 divided by four was seven. So our answer goes on the top, the seven went on top. Then we multiplied, well, seven times four is 28. So when we multiply, the answer goes under the remainder. Okay, then we subtract the remainder with the answer to the multiplying and we keep going until there's no remainder. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at another example. So here we have example two, now we have five, six. So the first step was the top dog needs to go in the house. Okay, so my top dog, that's my numerator, so that's gonna be the number on top. Let me go ahead and change colors. So five is gonna go in the house. That means six is gonna go on the outside. Now I'm ready to start dividing. So does six go into five? No, it goes in zero times. All right, so now we know we have to add our decimal. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the decimal and wherever I add it in the problem, it's gonna go straight up on top into the answer, okay? Now I can put in a zero, okay? Now, how many times does six go into 50? So that's 50 divided by six. 50 divided by six or how many times does six go into 50? eight times. So my answer to the division is going to go on top. That's eight. Now I multiply the two numbers together, the eight and the six, and I get 48. And I'm ready to subtract. 50 minus 48 is two. We still have a remainder, so we need to repeat. We're going to drop down another zero. We're gonna divide 20 by six and put our answer on top. So 20 divided by six, well, six goes into 20 three times, and that's 18. And then we subtract. 20 minus 18 is two. We still have a remainder, so we need to repeat. I'm gonna drop down another zero, and we have 20 again. 6 goes into 20, or 20 divided by 6 is 3. 
3 times 6 is 18, and we subtract, and I get 2. Now, you will notice we have a pattern, okay? We have a pattern now. We keep getting a 2, and when we drop that 0 down, it becomes 20, and then 6 goes into 20 three times, but we keep getting 2 as a remainder. So what's going to happen? Well, that 3 is going to keep repeating forever. This is what is called a repeating decimal. A repeating decimal. So do I need to keep dividing on this one? No, because it's a repeating decimal. There's a pattern. We're going to keep always getting 2 as a remainder. Okay, it's never going to stop. So that means my answer is going to be 0 0.83, except the 3 is going to keep going forever. So I'm going to go ahead and put the infinity bar over 3. And that's my answer, 0 0.83. Okay? And as always, if you still need help or if you have any additional questions, feel free to make an appointment with me for office hours. Hope you have a great day.